On today's episode, we're gonna take a look at this, the Ender 3 S1 Plus. It's got a 300 by 300 by 300 build area, direct drive, and a few other features. Let's talk about it, show you how well it prints, right here on Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. The Ender 3 S1 Plus comes mostly assembled. It's pretty easy to put together. Within 15-20 minutes you got it together and running. The auto level will probably take you a little bit longer, but it's really not difficult to get started. The Ender 3 S1 Plus is really an upgrade to this, the original Ender 3 large printer, the Ender 3 Max. I've showed this on the channel before. I've used it often. What's the difference between these two? Well, first off, price. This is about twice the price of this guy. So what do you get for that extra money? Well, first off, you get a direct drive extruder with an auto level sensor. This is manual level and a Bowden stop. Second, you get dual threaded rods at the back to lift the gantry. This is a single threaded rod, so some people worry about this sagging, though I've never seen that as an issue. This one has a built-in power supply. This one has an external power supply similar to the Ender 3 Pro. This one has a spool holder on top with a filament runout sensor. This has a spool holder on the side. There's a spot for a filament runout sensor, but it's not included. This one has silent stepper drivers on all the steppers. This only has it on the X and Y axis, so this one's a little quieter. They both have orange stronger springs to support the beds. This one has metal adjustment knobs. This has plastic. This one has a metal coated bed, a PC bed that you can flex. This is a glass bed with a coating on top. I kind of like the glass better. So why do I like the glass bed better than this? It's because the coating that they put on is too good. This is the same bed, only smaller, on the Ender 3 S1. I had my bed level off just a little bit, my Z offset, so it squished down the first layer, and I cannot get these off. I've scraped and I've scraped. So it's great for getting prints to stick, but it almost sticks too good. Another difference is the display. This is a basic Ender display with a knob that you click. This has touchscreen. Now, I don't like the interface, I find it very confusing, but if you like a touch screen, you may like it, this one has it. Another difference is the print area. They're both 300 by 300 in the X direction, but this can go 340 in the Z versus 300. So this can actually print bigger prints. One area where they're not different is they both have PTFE tubing going all the way down to the nozzle. That nozzle sits there, the PTFE tubing comes down, in this case a Bowden, in this case a small little insert, but it touches the nozzle and eventually it'll burn just like this. As I showed in a previous video, Creality has an all-metal heat break for this extruder. In fact, it's on their Ender 3 S1 Pro. I installed one on my Ender 3 S1 to bring it up to that level. Why this machine for $529 doesn't have that? I don't know, that's a big fail. So the real question is how well does it print? Well, it turns out print quality, it's really good. Uh, this is a sample cat I printed. It's small, but it printed really good, nice and smooth. I printed their coin that they include. It's like a Bitcoin symbol. Uh, the first one, I didn't get the auto level Z offset right, so it squished it and I couldn't get it off the bed. That was my first experience with this bed material, but once I got it set right, this thing printed good. But then I was afraid for anything large and flat to stick too well, so I offset a little bit too much. When I printed this handle, which is their sample print, I still don't know where this thing goes, but it's a little rough on the bottom because I didn't have the bed level right. Even though it's auto level, I'm still fighting the surface. <laughs> now you can flip this over. There's a smooth side on the other side and maybe use a little glue stick. It's probably the better way to go. But that printed everywhere else very, very nice. I did get contact by a viewer who said that my extra fast profile was giving him all kinds of stringing on his large CR10 printer. So I printed this similar size with my extra fast profile and I got absolutely no stringing. It's clean, it came out really nice, printed it pretty fast, three hours and 20 minutes, I think, to print this. And he found out it was his PTFE tubing on a CR10, it was bad, not my profile. But I was really happy with the way that turned out. So then I wanted to print something a little bigger, so I printed this 500% Stemfy block, it's nice and flat, came out really nice, looks good. This is at a Draft 0.28, Stock Draft Profile and Cura. Took six hours. Then I went back and printed the same thing, sliced it with my extra fast profile at 0.28 and three hours. So I cut it in half and the quality looks just as good. And then I thought, 
big printer. Let's try a big nozzle. So I tried a 0.8 nozzle on this thing. Now I could have printed something really big, but I wanted to see how much detail I could get out of it. So I printed a 300% stem fee block and I used the 0.8 draft setting in Cura. There was only one built-in profile for 0.8 nozzle and it was a 0.32 layer height. So I sliced this guy, printed it, and it came out really nice. I was surprised how clean this was. No stringing, nothing. And it took one hour and 13 minutes. So with a 0.4 nozzle, this would take two hours. So almost cut the time in half just by changing the nozzle. But then I had to go back and change it to 0.4 and try my extra fast profile. And this is at a 0.28 layer height, one hour and five minutes. So I was actually faster with my extra fast profile and a 0.4 nozzle than Cura's draft profile with a 0.8 nozzle. So you really don't need to change to a 0.8 if you want speed, but if you just want stronger walls or things like that, a 0.8 nozzle can definitely print on this, no problem. Overall, I like this machine. It prints really well. I don't know if I'd pay $529 for it though. I'd wait for it to go on sale. But if you want a big printer, you want direct drive, you want auto level, you want dual lead screws, you want uh, you know a nice mostly assembled printer, this is probably not a bad way to go. I would just plan on putting that all metal heat break that I showed in a previous video on this thing. That's the one upgrade I would make and then just use it. If you're looking at getting your own Creality Ender 3S1, check out creality3dofficial.com by ComGrow. They've got all the different S1s, including the base S1 with direct drive, auto level, and dual Z screws. They also have the S1 Pro, which has all those same features, plus a PEI bed and a high temperature hot end. They also have the new Ender 3 S1 Plus. So check it out at creality3dofficial.com by ComGirl. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.